I am about to save you a lot of time. If you want to learn how to use the AWS EKS Elastic Kubernetes service and you want to learn it quickly without being given loads of YAML files that you're not going to read or superfluous commands that you don't need to issue, well, you have come to the right place. I'm going to get you up and running from creating a brand new EKS cluster to deploying a full microservice written in Spring Boot with a React front end. And I'm going to get this all up and running in about five to 10 minutes. In fact, the longest part of this tutorial is just going to be waiting for EKS to create that cluster because we work a lot faster than AWS does. Here's the deal. I've got a, a little application that I would like to deploy. As I mentioned, it's a React front end, and it's actually part of this new website that I'm creating with AWS certification exam. So certification exam.guru if you want to get AWS certified, but I'll promote myself a little bit later. All of the code is up on my GitHub repository. So if you found Spring Boot example slash environment probe, you can go in there. You might even see a handsome Docker file that I issued a Docker build command on in order to create the Docker image, which got pushed up to, you know where it got pushed up to. It got pushed up to Docker Hub. And there you go, Cameron MCNZ slash dad jokes. That's what we're gonna be deploying into Kubernetes. And what do you call a fish without an eye? Fish. What do you call a deer with no eyes? No idea. And why did the Java methods get a divorce? They had constant arguments. I told you these were some bad dad jokes, but getting started, showing you what the prerequisites are to do this lab, this exercise quickly, that is what we're going to do next. Okay, the prerequisites for this EKS fun game we're gonna play is first you need an AWS account, which I figure you've got covered, but I do have a tutorial on how to create a free one if you're interested. Beyond that, you also need to have the ALS CLI installed. I've gone to a command prompt here. I type in AWS dash dash version and it tells me indeed it is installed. Again, I got a tutorial on AWS configure and the CLI tool installation if you wanna check that out. You also need kubectl installed. You can just curl that and bring it down. Also, if you've installed Minikube or even Docker desktop for Windows, you'll already have it on your system. Uh, there's some tutorials online on how to bring that in. That's easy to do. And you'll also need this tool that you can download from AWS called EKS CT. L. I get a simple download, put that in the same folder that you installed your AWS CLI tool into so it's on the path and you have no problem getting to it. If you don't have it installed, it'll take you two seconds to do it. So don't waste your time. Get that downloaded and installed. So I want to create an EKS cluster that is going to allow me to deploy my Docker containers to it here is the command that I want you to issue. Now, I'm doing this from PowerShell, so your syntax may be different if you're cool and you use Linux, but it's essentially the same as I like to say. It's exactly the same, it's just different. Here's the command, EKSCTL, EKS Cuddle. Let's create a cluster. Let's name it the Certification EAM Guru Dev Cluster. Yes, I forgot to put the X in there, but I don't like the back button, so I'm gonna leave it like that. What version of Kubernetes are you gonna use? I'm gonna use 1.32. What region are you in? I'm in US East. What is gonna be the node group name? I'm gonna have Guru Dev Nodes. What is the node type? T2 Medium. I'm cheap, I'd rather do T2 Nano, but if you do, it's not gonna work. Kubernetes does a lot like Nano instances. And how many nodes do you wanna start off with? I'm gonna start off with two. Now this command might take a while to run. It all depends on how much money you've slid Jeff Bezos. Uh, for me, this could take, you know, I've seen it take 10 minutes before. It does take quite a long time. In the meantime, I guess I could always tell you, you should like and subscribe. I should also tell you that 
The website that I'm deploying here is actually just a precursor for the actual certification exam guru website I'm working on where you can take mock exams to get AWS certified. So if you want your practitioner, developer, solution architect, or DevOps professional certification, check that site out and subscribe to my newsletter as well, where I'm going to be updating people on some of the best practices for getting certified. This is going to take a while longer to go, so you might have to listen to me promote myself some more. Um, let me see. I got some books coming out. Uh, Hibernate Made Easy is coming out soon, and there's Darcy to Clute Scrum Master Certification Guide, which I helped do some edits on. So if you want to get Scrum certified, you know someone that does, you can check that out as well. I wrote Pickering a Spring Field. Okay, this is done. We now have our cluster created okay so what do you want to do next well i'm going to click uh control l just to clear the powershell window now i want to deploy that docker container into that kubernetes cluster how do i do it it's kubectl it's back to basics here it's the same command you'd use with any kubernetes instance kubectl create a deployment the deployment is going to be called dad jokes deployment and it's going to use the image cameron mcnz slash dad jokes that's the docker container that i showed you earlier that's built from the spring boot react application i showed you in github it was built using that docker file and the docker build command so that's all right there you can inspect all of it that takes a second to create now you want to actually access that application well here's what you've got to do you got to expose it and this is kubectl expose deployment dad jokes deployment the name is going to be the dad jokes service and then we're going to use a load balancer on port 80 and that's the port and the target port as well now what's next these services won't work unless they've got a couple of annotations on them that will match some of the annotations that have been put on the cluster that have been put there by the EKS CTL tool. This is something that most people miss and this is the reason most of the deployments people create right off the bat with a Kubernetes cluster fail. So first off, I'm going to annotate the service with the load balancer type external and I'm gonna overwrite any existing entries there. Now, I wanna add this uh, other annotation that says that the application is internet facing. I'm gonna add another annotation that says it uses an HTTP-based AWS load balancer for the protocol. And I think I got one more, the AWS load balancer timeout, which I'm gonna to set to 60. Okay. I've saved you time. Notice that I'm not using any of that stupid YAML here. Notice that I'm not saying, oh, here's a great big long file that is too confusing to write yourself and has a bunch of stuff that you're not going to read and it's probably not going to work because there's a space somewhere. Just giving you the commands to do this to get this done. Now, I think we're done. I like to do a little restart. I don't think this is necessary, but Hey, let's restart the app. So kubectl roll out a, a restart of the dad jokes app deployment. Oh, what did I do there? I'm going too fast. Sorry. I called it dad jokes app. It's not dad jokes app. It's dad jokes deployment that we want to uh, roll out. So let me just do that again. kubectl get deployment. You'll see uh, that's the dad jokes deployment, not dad jokes app. Sorry about that. I'm just going to do this again. kubectl roll out restart deployment dad jokes deployment. That gets the deployment rolled out. And now let's go see what the public URL of this service is. Yes, we're going for the public URL for the service. We've created the cluster. We have done the deployment. We have exposed the service. We even restarted that deployment. Now we've got a public IP address and we've got a really long and ugly URL to gain access to it. But let's go, let's type that in. I'm from Missouri. I like to be shown these things. So there we go. We type that in, we throw that into the browser. 
and boom, our application is deployed. Look at this. We've got that Amazon AWS EKS URL in there. That is now hitting the application on those pods that are deployed onto those two uh, replicas there in my EKS cluster and everything works swimmingly. Now, one thing I will say to you is after you've done this, go and dig into AWS, go and look at the dashboard, look at the EKS dashboard. You'll see that misspelled cluster in there and dig in, take a, a look at what's going on there. Take a look at the subnets that have been associated with this cluster, dig around a little bit, look at those tags that have been added there. You notice there's a bunch of different annotations that the EKS CTL command throws onto those subnets for the cluster. If you're trying to do all of this by hand without that, you're going to have to add those in there. Um, ask for the service to be described. Look at the annotations on the service. Those annotations on the service are the ones that we added. So the one just on the subnet, that's what the EKS CTL tool did. Those are the ones that we put on there. Those are necessary. If you don't have those, you're going to be in a world of hurt. And just go in, go explore all of the different resources that are created. There's a load balancer. Where did this load balancer come from? Well, I guess the EKS CTL tool or the uh, uh, service expose had to do that. But we now see that we've got this application exposed on port 80. So there's a load balancer in the mix. Oh boy, I'm looking like I got target instances here for that load balancer. And those Target instances, those look a lot like EC2 instances that might be hosting this exam guru application that I have deployed. Take a look at the instance summary, take a look at the IP addresses, take a look at the subnet. You can see, look at the IAM role. You can see that this EC2 instance is just supporting this cluster. It's supporting this Elastic Kubernetes service cluster. So I do urge you to do that. We ran a couple of commands. We saw some information. Go in, dig around, see what resources got created because that's how you're really going to learn. But I'm telling you, I don't think you'll find too many other tutorials that will get you going this quickly with EKS. If you like this tutorial, please like, please subscribe, please leave a comment and please check out certificationexam.guru if you want to get AWS certified, Java certified, Scrum certified. We've got all sorts of practice exams there to help you out.